Welcome back to my channel. I'm Rhea Killam and I love to show real homes and how to make them beautiful. And today we are going to be talking about the two hottest color trends and how to incorporate them into your home. Or if you've started and you bought some pieces and now you're like, oh, I think this is wrong. You're in the right place. So just before we get started, in case you are thinking of adding another black item to your home, let me just let me just show you a picture, okay? Let's just mark this on the calendar, okay? It is January 2024. We are about six or seven years into the black and white trend, and I saw an image today, and here it is, sent to me by a follower. This is now the peak of the trend, okay? Because I have not seen a bathroom as bad as this one. It's every version of black you could possibly choose all crammed into a bathroom that makes it look black and white. So if you are thinking about adding more black, then I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying stop <laughs> because it's going to be too much. You're going to feel it if you've gone this far. All right. So today we're going to be talking about color because color is now back. So let's get started. So these were the inspiration images that Patrice, my client, sent in. Fabulous. And so we put together colors for him, a whole package, and he went ahead and started to paint. He put up an accent wall and then he painted the lowers in the kitchen teal when I had said paint the whole kitchen teal. If you're going to incorporate color, you got to do it right. But here's the reason why homeowners get gun shy about color. Okay, because the same thing happened to me. I've been writing a blog for 15 years about timeless color and I have come a long way, let's be clear, from what my rooms look like 15 years ago and what they look like now. But back in the day, I moved and decided to buy my famous yellow sofa that's been in, this is in its fourth makeover where it is now. So I bought the yellow sofa and at the same time that the sofa was coming, I painted the living room yellow. Well, when the sofa came, I was horrified. I was like, oh my gosh, this is way too much yellow. And I chalked it up to that yellow is a difficult color to live with if it's not in a hallway or something. But you know what? Now, fast forward that I know what I know about color. I teach a distinction called the color balancing method in my two day workshops how to create your dream home for homeowners and my expert color and design training for designers and color professionals. And now what I've learned is that the room was still naked. I didn't have any art on the walls and certainly didn't have anything coming at that moment. And this is exactly why designers always need to install a room for their client all at once. Or let's just say it's best if you can install it all at once because if you specify an entire room for your client and then each piece of furniture arrives, right? The room gets painted or the area rug goes in and then one piece of furniture arrives and the next piece of furniture arrives. What you end up doing is having to sell each piece over again because there's no context for the actual entire finished room. That's why you want to install the room all at once so then that even really hides any mistakes you might have made because once the room is installed, now it's just da 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 and everybody's happy. So this is also the reason why I think that a lot of people are afraid of decorating with color because if you're buying one piece at a time, it's not gonna look finished if you're decorating with color if you don't have the room and all the pieces installed at the same time. If you're just buying a bunch of neutral items for your living room, each neutral thing that comes along, meh, you're not that offended if it isn't amazing because it doesn't say hi like color does. So color makes an impact. And it's kind of like I was at a consultation once where I had a client say to me, well, Maria, like I'm not good at pulling the room together on the pillows and the styling. And so I want some accent walls. I want some color on the walls because that's kind of where my joy has to be. And so that's what we did. One of the questions that I received from a follower was if I could show for 2024, she said, I'd like to see design focused on smaller, colorful, minimal spaces like English cottage interiors, but without the maximalism because maximalism, which is just like the examples my e-design client sent in is difficult for people to do if they've never really decorated. You have to be really committed to decorating and collecting all the pieces that are going to turn a room 
into a maximalist room like this. So it got us to thinking about this e-design client. We were looking at his images, and so we asked him if we could use his space as an example on my channel, and he generously agreed. So thank you so much. So number one, if you want to add color to your space, you need to be bold and you need to be patient if you are not doing everything all at once. So number one, the entire kitchen has to go teal, not just half, the whole thing. And the builder should have taken those cabinets all the way to the ceiling, but because he didn't, and because this is a long, narrow space with only light at one end of the room, I would put a strip of LED lights above the kitchen cabinets and then make sure you've got a lamp or two on the countertops. And I would just have them on 24 seven, really. With the world of LED lighting, you know, you don't need to worry about electricity, just have them on 24 seven. Next, the entire space needs to be this fabulous Catalina blue. The thing with decorating with color and moving your space more to like a little more maximalism, you don't have to go all the way, but you definitely need to have that gallery wall. It's not as impactful to just have that one piece of art slapped up above the sofa. So you need a gallery wall and lighting is really important. Look at how this room is just transformed with these sexy mid-century modern lights and the glam dining room light fixture that now visually matches the glam feeling of the sofa. By the way, I know why there's a sectional in here with two chaise lounges. That's because then two people get to sit in the most comfortable spot on the sofa. I see you. I get it. Now the other possible color in here could be a color that's right in between an orange beige and a gold beige and it's a color called Sherwin-Williams Ivory. I know I didn't say it right because it's French but anyhow this would also be fabulous in here if you want to keep the teal over to the cabinets and not have everything be green. So that's the other possible color that would be great in here. Number two is color drenching. Now color drenching is another trend I just talked about in my last trends video and that's when you paint everything in the room, trim, doors, walls, the same color. And in this particular case, because basically you sit down on your sofa and this is your focal point of where we have all these awkward walls and transitions and we've got these two doors that we're staring at. So in this case, I would paint everything in this room, including the doors and the trim, whatever color we choose, because then the doors kind of disappear. So my biggest takeaway for you today is if you're looking around at your space, at your interior, and you're worried that new pieces that you've purchased are not really working, it might just be just because you're not finished yet. You know, the space is feeling a little naked. So keep decorating, never stop decorating. And if you like this content, please subscribe and like below. And I'll see you next time.